Hello, I'm John White, a professional performance historian who, for over 25 years, has interpreted events from the past through the portrayal of in excess of 30 characters. Of all the characters I portray, it is my representation of King Henry VIII that proves the most popular. I present the king as he would have appeared in the year 1544, when he was aged 53 and married to his new and sixth wife. We hope that you enjoy what the king has to say. My loyal subjects, I have these past several months when speaking to you, I have on occasion been asked by my loyal and well-beloved subjects, what is the nature of the clothing that I do wear? Thus, on this occasion, I do invite you all to dress the king. You will have on a number of occasions seen your sovereign lord king attired thus. And indeed, you may be forgiven for thinking that your king is dressed for bed. Well, in some respects, depending upon the hour of the day, this may indeed be true. But in truth, this is a gown. I do wear such gowns when at home, in my castles or palaces, and, and taking of my ease, you observe, I wear my slippers. These are bare paw slippers, like so, for ease of wearing and give my foot the appearance of being a bear's paw. Uh, my gown is edged and trimmed with sable fur. I wear beneath a fine linen shirt or shift, and I do have upon my head a hat. It is vulgar to appear in company indoors or outdoors without your head covered. Indeed, for a woman of any social rank, it is a grave sin to show of your hair in public. And about my neck, I am adorned with that jewel, the Order of the Garter. Suspended from the garter, there is the great George, that figure of our patron saint, the saint of England, slaying of the dragon. This, as you are aware, is an allegorical story that does tell the tale of George, a Roman who did convert to Christianity, did give of his life in martyrdom against the evil of Rome. <laughs> the evil of Rome. What greater significance could this have in my situation? The evil of Rome is thus represented by the dragon. And upon the collarettes, you do see that rose, the Tudor rose, that which has the red rose of Lancaster without, with the white rose of York within. It does show the union of the houses of York and Lancaster, as unified by my father, King Henry the seventh of that name, of the House of Lancaster, when he did marry and take for his wife, Princess Elizabeth of York, my mother. I, as their child, I am that very Rose of England. And thus, in comfort, I do disport myself in this great gown. And thus, you do observe your king in a state of undress, surely a sight to behold, perhaps even perchance, the king is in his all together. And you observe, I do wear a shirt or a shift. I do change of my shirt, my linen, upwards of four times a day, for it is our belief that as we exert ourselves during the toil and heat of the day, the humours, the miasmas, the dirt, the filth that is exuded by the body is taken away 
by the linen. So the frequent changes of linen, four and more times a day, just keep our bodies cleanly. Now, similarly, you do observe that the shirt is embellished with that which is termed black work about the wrists and about the neck. And the shirt is secured at both the wrists and neck by plaited ties. My legs are embellished by the finest silken stockings. And there, below the knee, upon my left leg, you observe that other important part of the garter regalia. It is indeed the garter, the order founded by my forebear, King Edward III of that name, and does bear upon it the motto of the Order of the Garter, the most famed order of chivalry in the world, en histoire qui m'en les pense, evil be to he that thinks it. And observe the calf. Is that not a dancer's leg? Having seen your king disrobe and appear before you in a state of undress, I shall now proceed to be clothed by my grooms in that ensemble, the like of which you are so very familiar. Thus, my loyal subjects, you now observe your king in his first stage of dressing. I have full shoes in place of my slippers. Thence, I have my nether or balloon hose and my jerky. The shoes, as you see, again have the shape and proportion of a bear's paw, bear paw shoes. The slashings within the leather are meant to signify the claws or perhaps even the blood of the bear's victim. Some slashings in the shoes are signified by silk within or as in this instance by red leather. Now you observe the nether hose or balloon hose. These are effectively the pants worn between the legs and the body. They are of silk mounted upon linen and they do have that most important embellishment, the codpiece. The codpiece is indeed a representation of the phallus. It is a sign of manliness. It is most fashionable, but in truth, the codpiece has its origins in being naught but a purse, a place where a fellow would keep his valuable possessions. Dare I make reference to those heathen fellows north of the border who still wear that purse to their front, which they call a sporum. It is said that a lady should look to a fellow's codpiece, its size being an indicator of his wealth. The hose are connected to the jerkin by a series of silk ribbons as points. The entire costume is held or hooked together. There are no other forms of closure. On my upper body, I wear my jerkin. This is a garment that upon the outside has cloth of gold, fabric which has the very fibre of gold woven within it. Beneath, there is a layer of silk, which you see emerging from the slashes or the pluckings. Beneath that, there is a layer of canvas, and beneath that, next to my shirt, there is a layer of linen. The whole garment is embellished by bullion lace. You observe upon my arms and upon my chest, bullion lace. This is lace that also has the very fibres of gold woven within it. The whole is again further embellished by the presence of a significant number of jewels. These are called ushers, or perhaps ouches. O-C-H-E-S. It is a French word 
which means a metallic embellishment or a closure or a device for holding a jewel for decoration upon a garment. And here my ushers or my edges are filled with tiger's eye jewels. I have ushers upon the front and ushers upon my arms. And upon the arms again you see the pluckings of silk emerging between the gold bullion. And indeed a further layer has been added. For now I do appear before you with a kirtle. This again fabric made of silk and cloth of gold edged with bullion lace has the appearance of a skirt above the nether hose open at the front to allow the codpiece to peep out. The kirtle has now been embellished by the addition of a good silk sash upon which is seated my short sword. Here upon cord of gold we have my short sword. Thus my loyal subjects very nearly all is complete for now I do appear before you in my gown. This is a rope of the very finest velvet edged and embellished by fur and containing the most opulent of gold bullion lace. The rope has a linen liner which covers a canvas inner and the velvet without. Observe, I have sleeves. In the event of inclement weather, I may place my arms thus. And the whole is complemented by this, the great George, a further emblem of the order of the garter, that which does have our saintly George slaying the evil dragon, around which are those words, Aniswar Kimalipos. I, as your sovereign lord and king, I am sovereign of the order, of which at any one time there are no more than 26 knights. And finally, all is topped off by my hat. Here you see a velvet cap with the feathers of the ostrich, embellished by jewels and pearls of the finest form. It is a hat which I am told in future times will come to be termed a statute cap, for there will be by Act of Parliament a law that requires all men and women to wear of a woolen hat in this style to stimulate our industries. But I, your king, do not wear of a woolen statute cap. I wear of the finest velvet cap. And thus, my loyal and well-beloved subjects, your king, Henry, the eighth of that name, is now prepared to go amongst and amidst his people. I do hope that you, my loyal subjects, have enjoyed dressing the king. And may God bless and keep you all. I have launched King Henry's Royal Wardrobe.com, an online garment store where you may find all manner of delightful Tudor goods, where all UK orders receive free shipping and those to the United States receive discounted shipping. Thank you for watching my video. If you have not already subscribed, then please subscribe below and click the bell if you wish to be advised of new videos. And please don't forget to like this video and to leave a comment below.